Hi, it's Richard Moore from Racing Profits Guides, and we're over here at Warrington with the boss of Bet, Fred, Fred Doan. Uh, we've come up to Warrington, Fred, just to talk a bit about obviously the history of Bet, Fred, mm. uh, your sponsorship and support of racing, and it's been you know, no more than that than uh, with what you've done with Chelmsford City. I was down there for the launch, and I thought it'd be a good idea to talk to you about your ideas. You know, when you were coming into Chelmsford. And also what your plans are for the future okay okay so let's talk a little bit about the history of Betfred I know it's uh, a long history so let's keep it potted and short and um, but it was 1967 was it you started yeah um, my brother and myself started the business in 67 with uh, it, we purchased our first shop in Salford mm -hmm. with four thousand pounds right two thousand pounds that we managed to raise between the family and the two thousand pound mortgage from the guy who bought it off Mm. First job every Monday morning was to send him his cheque of twenty pounds plus his interest on it. Was that um, his rent? He, yeah, he gave me uh, he gave me my first break. He said, "Look, I can sell it to Ladbrokes or Hills." Mm. He said, "But as soon as it's been a family business, and I want it to stay in a family, and that's how it started." Fabulous. So from those early days, um, you say Peter and yourself set up the business. Yeah. Were you on course bookmakers as well as uh, on the high street? Well, or? no, I was never on course bookmaker. That's not to say that I've not worked the courses. Mm. I worked the courses at the old Manchester race course. Right, yeah. And I did a bit of the dogs. Right. The Salford dogs. So we did a bit of both. Yeah, yeah. And then was your father a bookmaker? or? My dad was an illegal bookmaker <laughs> during the war. Right. Um, my dad was... Um, he used to bet under the name of Fred Hyde, H-Y-D-E, right. because we lived in Hyde Street in Salford, and in, in those days, uh, you bet in somebody else's name or another name, an alias. Hmm. And um, and I used to see the police come in and take the backhanders, and I'd never known a policeman um, ever refused one. No. I don't know whether that should be said on camera, but that's the <laughs> truth of it. it in those days. It was a little bit like Peaky Blinders, if you want. Maybe yeah. not as violent as that, but that's the way it was. <laughs> it was. And then the business obviously grew 1967 up through the 70s. You expanded. Was it mainly in the northwest? You mainly in the northwest. And uh, if I've got one of the problems I've had with myself, I was a bit parochial. Mm -hmm. well, you know, we just if it was more than 25 miles from Manchester, I didn't want to know about it. And then the great uh, breakthrough came was when I bought a shop about shops about 20 years ago in Newcastle. Right. I bought 16 shops up there, mm. and um, off a guy called Robert Walker. We bought them, and I had a very very good area manager up there, and it created no problems whatsoever for me. And I thought if I can run Newcastle, I can run Timbuktu. So we then got the um, the impetus to go down to Devon, Cornwall, those sort of places, mm. and that's, the rest is history. And was it always buying existing businesses or did you set up a mix of new shops and yeah. existing yeah. shops? Well, we were massively successful in opening new shops. Mm. What I did, I put a team together, they were still with me and, I, and they were all homegrown uh, products from, the, from my betting shops. Yeah. We nurtured them, we knew uh, what we were looking for, for the post office, the the bus stops, the the pubs, the factories, all the infrastructure football, around. Football. We never did it by postcode. We went and tramped the floor ourselves, mm. including myself, with yeah. t-shirts and jeans and weighing up other people's businesses where it was. And we were massively successful at it. At, at its peak, we were opening 80 new shops a year, which was very very difficult wow. to do. Yeah. I mean, we had to keep running to keep going there, mm. but. Mm. Our modus operandi was always to give bonuses and give more than the rest of the industry. Why should people leave other other um, premises that they've been betting with for years? Yeah. I needed to give them a reason to bet with me, and the reason was I was the bonus king. Mm -hmm. And we give value, we work to probably 2% less than the rest of the industry, and we still do because mm. we give value for money all the time mm. and that's why we were successful. And you're it. always seen as this friendly bookmaker. I think that's the certainly that as an outsider looking in, that's how it always comes across, I think, that uh, you give value as in your odds, but you also give value to people as in they feel valued yeah, well, as a customer. Uh, and I do do. You know, my mm. heart is, uh, is in the betting shots because that was, you know, I came from the shop floor myself. Mm. Um, and I've loved it. I mean, I was in uh, shops in London yesterday talking to punters, and you know, I always get a positive reaction. Mm. I don't mm. think I've ever had anything negative with punters. No. And I love the banter with them. Um, and we are different. I'll tell you why we're different. 
we're different because I am a bookmaker by heart. Yeah. If you look at the major uh, companies in this country now, they're not bookmakers. They're, they're faceless. Not, they're they? faceless. They've come from. Mm. The, they're run by accountants mm. and lawyers and so on. If mm. we if we're politically wrong, we're wrong, mm. and we're wrong because it doesn't interest me. Mm. What interests me is giving good value and good service and a mm. friendly service to the uh, customers. Mm. And I think the problem is with the faceless one, you don't differentiate yourself, do you? Everybody looks the same. I mean, it is blurring into just this betting industry. A absolutely. And you know you get the same, the same product, the same atmosphere wherever you go. Yeah, it does feel different. And do you think that is from you leading as a bookmaker yeah, at the top still? Yeah, I, I do mm. do. You know, I, I, I don't like the corporate image. I mean, um, when we have board meetings at Betfred, you mm. know, we put a time limit on a board meeting of two hours. Mm. And we do it four times a year. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, do, we, we see one another, I'm talking at director level, on a daily basis. And yeah. if we've got problems, we sort them out over a cup of coffee and yeah. it's dealt with and it's done. Mm. And I think that uh, that goes into the shops and into the business. The business eth ethics is, without the customer, we don't have a business. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you can forget about margins and and uh, efficiencies. Without yeah. the customer, you have you know, no business, because it business. starts with your customer. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you need to look after them. If you don't, the customer is king. Yeah, absolutely. Bonus king and customer's king. Absolutely. So if we uh, roll forward then, we're in 2015 now, while we're recording this, so you've got two years to go until 50 years. Um, how big's the business now? How well, we, we're employing 10,000 people. Mm -hmm. uh, we're on every race course in, uh, in the UK bar three. Mm -hmm. um, we're running just short of 1,400 betting shops. Mm -hmm. We've got an online business which is really performing well. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we have got, which is unique, we own the tote, yeah. which was, we bought- What year was that? We bought 2011. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I could talk to you all day about the- Yeah, we'll do another video. You yeah, need to do another vi yeah. video. But the feeling behind it was what, the, buying the business or just because then it'd give you this exposure on courses? Well, what it, no, it, was, it wasn't that. There was an opportunity came along. I mean, it was the sale of the tote was on and off for about seven or eight it years. Was, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, the management of the uh, the tote must have been demoralised because they didn't know where this stood. Mm. You know, there was no Certainty. real investment yeah. went went into it, and um, the opportunity came along, and it took nine months from it was finding out that the tote was for sale to actually doing the deal. Yeah. And I was told it was going to be a roller coaster, and it was a roller coaster. You know, mm -hmm. some days we thought we'd got it, other days we had gone away from us. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, eventually we got it. Mm -hmm. We revitalised the tote. We've put, um, we've done a lot of a lot of work on it. Mm -hmm. On it, I, I believe my competition in the uh, in the race for the tote was against uh, Sir Martin Broughton, mm -hmm. who had all the credentials of the city. My firm belief is that I did him a favour in not letting him get it. Mm. Reason, I believe it would have been with the banks. Mm. You needed somebody who was already in the, the industry, Understood somebody it, yeah. with management skills mm. and, and the team behind them. Mm. And that's what I had and that's why we've made a success of it. Yeah. But believe me, it has not been easy, but we're there with it now. And you talk about your management team, um, you say John Haddock, who's the, is he the MD now? John, no, John it was the MD, he's now CEO of the company. He's John been with you all through the years, hasn't well, he? He's been with me for over 30 years now. Mm. John started as a shop manager, area manager, regional manager, mm. managing director, and now CEO. Mm. And he's a good guy. Yeah. He knows the business inside out. I've got Phil Sears, who looks after the tote for yeah. me, and he's managing my IT. Mm -hmm. I've got Joe Scanlon, the ex-MD of, uh, of the tote, tote who yeah. looks after... Looks after me when I'm in trouble. He goes and shakes hands with people and says, Fred didn't mean it. He's my ambassador. He's my ambassador. Diplomacy. So he's, he's, he's my diplomat. The diplomat exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I've got a very good team behind me, you know, and I appreciate them all. I've got a good FD that's uh, a young lady who knows her onions and she keeps me out of trouble with the, with the cash. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I've got a. I wouldn't change any of my team if I could. Very solid, yeah, and that, you can tell that, can't you? It uh, gives you the confidence, I suppose, as the boss, doesn't 100%. it? hundred percent. That you know, you've got all those quality people that you know and can trust. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then we've got, obviously, looking forward, um, a lot of technologies come into betting over the last probably six or seven years. Uh, you were saying you were, went online eight years ago, did you, as a company? Yeah, we went on, uh, online eight years ago, and it's, you know, 
it, everybody says that is the growth area, which mm. it is, mm. but believe me, it's not easy. No. You know, there's plenty of keen competition out mm. there, mm. and there's some good operators. Mm. Uh, I mean, the operator I admire best of all in the industry is 365, mm. because they've come from nowhere to do what they've done. Mm. I'm uh, envious of them. I think they've done a wonderful, wonderful job there. Mm. And they've shown the big three, mm. Ladbrokes Hills Corals, mm. a clean pair of heels. They, have, yeah. they had all the resources, all the money, all the marketing, the expertise, etc. Mm. You get little 365 who were provincial racing from the Stoke area. Stoke, yeah. have done fantastic. Yeah, yeah, they did. They, that's mm. what I'd em like to emulate. We were slow starters. We made all the mistakes that we can, mm. but we're building a nice business online, mm. which I'm going to be proud of. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And the mobile side as well, I suppose, that's the next step from online, isn't it? Well, mobile, uh, in fact, I've got my own company called Degree 53 that I formed three years ago with mm. four people. It's now employing about 40 people. Mm. South Manchester, a great atmosphere when you go in there. Mm. The mobile product is, uh, is probably 70% of my online profit comes out on the mobile, 30% mm. on desktop. Mm -hmm. That is the growth area. Mm. Because of in-play and things like that. It's so in, instant, isn't it? In-play, and it's easy. Mm. I mean, you That's can play it. on the bus going home. Yeah. You can play as you're walking through the street and watch what you want to do. Mm. It's fantastic. Fabulous. Anyway, we'll end this part of the video there, if we can, Fred, and cool. then we'll go on to your involvement in horse racing a bit after that and your support of horse racing. I'm ready Thank for you. you.